share and invite somebody to be in the service. We minister to nations. Nations are God's heart's desire. He wants them to be discipled. May this kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom, reach you where you are. And the rule of God come in your nation. I'm called Godfrey Buire. And my interpreter. By God's grace, we are blessed to stand before you to share the word of God. Amen. Amen. I see guests in our congregation today. We are blessed to have you, our dear guests. One time Abraham welcomed the guests and he got his family got a blessing. I want to welcome Evangelist Regina to come and introduce the guests to us. They could be having a message for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sukuka. Go, away. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Arise. Is here. The Holy Spirit is here. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God so much for the wonderful worship. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. I love you so, so much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to greet my brothers and sisters. I am so blessed to be here today. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, 2001, I came the first time on this mountain. And the Lord touched my heart. He transformed me here. I learned prayer here. I was running around the fire and praying at night. <laughs> <laughs> we had no building. We had only a fire there every Friday. One or two, I know I know I thank God for Cho Apostle John Molinde and all ne the team here. This is a holy place. This is a place where lives are transformed. This is a place where we go to the nations. And the nations come to you. We thank God for this place. We thank God for his presence here. We thank him that we can seek him here earnestly. I I am now 22 years in this country. <laughs> and I am blessed to be And this place was the beginning. I don't know where the Lord is sending you. But if you seek him, he will tell you. And he will release you. And he will give everything that what is needed to fulfill your calling in your life. I'm not here to preach, sorry. <laughs> but I want just to, to say this is a team from Germany. Germany. <laughs> 
They are wonderful missionaries. Babuba minsa ni balunji nyo. And we are going to Buiga. And era to gende Buiga. Amen. We are going to the north to the Acholi to dance. Era to gende Buiga mu kamu Acholi to zine Acholi dance. Hey. And we will win souls for the kingdom. We will heal the sick by the grace and by the power of God. Hey, Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for greeting us. We love you all. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you give an evangelist a microphone. <laughs> Just know that fire is in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Evangelist Regina. For partnering with us to build God's kingdom. Regina is not the first time is going to Boiga with the missions teams. She has introduced their projects which are blessing the city uh, the residents of Boiga. So she is a great partner to this ministry. Young ladies who had dropped out of school but got saved and had no jobs, they were empowered in skills. Each was given a, 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 a sewing machine. After training of about six months. They are also helping some poor to get education. Bless the nation of Germany. And remember to pray for Germany. As you go on the highway to Acholi land, there's another sister church called the Ruelo Trumpet Center. You can branch there and blow the trumpet in that in sister church. I will give you the direction. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome to Uganda. May the Lord refresh you and revive you. Go back and fulfill God's destiny. Amina. Amen. Church, give them apples of handicap. He is even older than he. The church, the church was not there at the beginning. She, 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 she says she was here at 2001. The church began in 2004. No, Kusinga church. Kusinga e kanise ne ya se Guku Trumpet Center. Yo ya tandi kamu bidi ena. ena. So kaya ya soko kuja wano bidi gumu. <laughs> Pardon? Yeah. Hallelujah. But the mountain started in 1999. We bless the Lord. The, the years he has kept us going. To keep the fire burning for all those years is not a small thing. For people to come back and still find the presence of God. It is by the grace of God. For sure. Mm. I know some ministries, by the time I got saved, they were on fire in Kampala. Some of the ministries have closed. They are no longer there. If the Lord has withheld us or upheld us up to this time, let us thank him. Amina. Amina. Today's theme of our 
ministry is got from John 14, verse 12. Have you reached there? Oh, wow. You can see the coming in your new coming at Biagamiti. Dala de Lambagamba anti. Akiri Zanze. Name me Muji and Cola. Jan Colanze. Nayali Chicola. And Ali College Singage of Nene. Kubangan Zengende Rich Tangi. Thank you. Amen. Father, breathe on this word, the breath of life. Wakama. That your word will come with the power to minister to us and transform us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So our theme is great power, great grace for great commission. Great power, great grace for great commission. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can we say it together? Great power. Great grace. For great commission. Great power. Great grace. For great commission. Now the last time you are going to do it better with zeal, with passion. Great power. Great grace. For great commission. Hallelujah. Amen. The scripture we have just read was promised to the apostles by Jesus Christ himself. Jesus was talking to his apostles. In King James says, most assuredly, I say to you, King James, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. So And greater works than this he will do because I go to my father. When the Bible says most assuredly, the writer is putting an emphasis on the point he's bringing up. He's putting you to have faith in what he's saying. And this is now Jesus himself being quoted by John. Some versions say, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Other Bibles say, Most assuredly, I say unto you. The amplified versions they say most solemnly. Praise the Lord. Amen. Those are words of emphasis by Jesus Christ. Jesus is like a swearing by himself an oath. To put confidence and faith in the believers. That you should not have an inch of doubt in what I'm promising you. Believe what I'm promising you. That's why he says, very, very, I say unto you. That's why he said that most solemnly, I say unto you. In childhood, we used to swear 
in order to put trust in somebody who is listening to us. We are talking about all. So I will be angry. To solve a problem, Ask your neighbor how did you use to swear when you were trying to convince somebody. Buzo ya kulira nyenti go wala irango tse wageza ngako kaka kaso yogo yogera na yeni. When you are trying to convince somebody. Bo wageza ngako kumuka kasa tse yogera jali. Sometimes we could do like this, then then we also put on the soil and. Uh, I don't know where that came from. But I used to see young children, youth, teen, teen age, they, they could say, do like this. Swearing to give confidence that what I'm telling you is true. Oh, I did. Oh, you coco, kaka so ya kutimia ngira to do it. So Jesus was also determined and assuring his apostles, his disciples, that most assuredly, very, most solemnly. Jesus is not man to lie. The politicians, sometimes I hear them on the radio, even suffering to say this is what is Solomon, Solomon, Sometimes they fail to even pronounce it when they are when they are making their oath. Solomon, you hear them when they are making their oath. Hallelujah. Amen. But they do lies. Those are politicians. But Jesus Christ is God. He is son of God. He speaks the truth. He is truth himself. Hallelujah. He honors his word. When he speaks it, he fulfills it. Hallelujah. So when he says that the disciples and apostles that the works that I do, you will also do. He meant it. Hallelujah. Amen. And he did not only end at the works that he did, he also assured them. Like saying, very, very, I say unto you, you even do greater works than what I have done. Hallelujah. Amen. I solemnly say unto you, you, my disciples, you are going to do greater works than that I've done. By the time Jesus is swearing, like is as if he's swearing an oath. Yes, He's serious with the promise. He's serious that he's going to be fulfilled. He wants the people to believe his words. But you who is seated here, do you believe these words? Among the works Jesus did while he was still on earth, he taught with authority. Hallelujah. Amen. He preached while signs and miracles, wonders were following his preaching. He healed the sick, resurrected the dead. Hallelujah. Amen. Crowds followed him. Impossible problems that had defeated doctors were solved. They were all mighty works. But still, he says to the church that those works you will do. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only what he did, but you will do even other works which he did not do. Amen. 
did this he did not say that only your leaders he did not say so he did not say big prophets or big apostles big evangelists no but believers you who believe in Jesus Christ you are going to do greater works are you a believer greater works are waiting for you Mighty works are waiting for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us go to Matthew 4:23. Matayo nya no nyirirwa abiri mu satu. Matayo esula yo kunonywa makumi abiri mu satu. Agambe nti Yesu nabuna galira yeyo na nabayigiriza mu makunganiro gabwe era nga abulire njire yo bwakabaka era nga awonye ndwadde zonna no bunafu bonna mu bantu continue amen olwabiri mwenya ebigambo bene bibuna obusuli bonna ne bamuletira bonna abali abalwadde abali bakwatidwa ndedde stali simu ne bibonyo obonyo ne bibonyo obonyo nabe misimu nabe nsimbu nabali bakozimbye nabawonya ebi olwabiri mwetano ebibina binji ngabave galiraya ne dekapoli ne yerusalemi ne buyudaya ne mitala wa yordani ne baita na ye mukama yebaziwe amen so we see jesus is ministry in matthew 4:23 tuna babuweleza wa yesu mu matayo yesu ayo kunolunyirwa bimisa how he went about all galilee teaching in the synagogues ngaba yagenda e galiraya nga ayigiriza mu basiganu nengogo so he did not stick to one place he was on a mission from town to town he preached both in the local assemblies the synagogues were the local assemblies so he could go there and also teach them the truth Hallelujah. Amen. And sometimes while he would be still teaching, demons manifested. And people were being delivered. Moreover, in a synagogue or in a local assembly. Praise the Lord. Amen. He did not only preach in the local assemblies, but he went also out to preach to the gospel of the kingdom to masses. He preached the kingdom of the, the gospel of the kingdom to masses. And healing all kinds of diseases, all kinds of the uh, uh, of all kinds of sickness and diseases among the people. Now, in this portion, we see three kinds of ministry. One, he taught with authority. Jesus had a teaching ministry. So the Great Commission also has a teaching ministry. As much as we encourage people to win souls, the teaching ministry establishes the new souls one. Such that when storms of life come, when they obey the word, when they have obeyed the word, the storms cannot crush them. They will remain strong. Hallelujah. Amen. Strong in the faith. So Jesus had a teaching ministry, but also proclaimed the preaching, proclaimed the gospel. To the people who were not yet saved. And this was accompanied by healings and deliverance. So there is teaching ministry. There is preaching or proclaiming the gospel. And then the third 
level of ministry was the power ministry. He, he demonstrated the power. The power of God. Through the healings. Through the casting out of demons. Hallelujah. Amen. That must continue to happen in our days. We ought to go and proclaim the gospel to the people who are not believers. Praise the Lord. Amen. But also demonstrate God's power that these people may be delivered from the captivity of the forces of evil and and also teach and ground the people in the faith. All this Jesus did and he expects us as a church to do the same works but also to do greater works above what he did. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, in doing all this, we need a treasure and that is the power from above. Go to first 2 Corinthians 4, 7. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Mm. Mm. Yes. Amen. So, for us who have been interested with the ministry of teaching, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and demonstrating the power. There is a treasure the Lord has given to the church. In verse 7 it says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Tell your neighbor, I know you are a weak vessel, but in you you have the treasure. The treasure that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. So God expects us to excel even the power that he has given us as a treasure within us. That's why we talk about great power and great grace. We must excel. You should grow beyond coming to this altar just to seek supper and lunch. You come here and sleep in the night just asking for fees. The treasure, the treasure in you is more than that. Hallelujah! Amen. You have a treasure that is entrusted to you to help the people in darkness see light. You have a spring message which other religions don't have. The message of salvation. The gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. That has been entrusted to us. The grace upon you is more than asking for what will I put on clothes. That treasure is being waited for by your family members. The people whom you work with want to see the manifestation of God's glory through uh, you. The neighborhood where you live, they want to you to manifest God's power, God's glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 
They don't want to see you begging food and salt. You have a treasure which can change their lives. There are things that are oppressing them and you have the treasure to deliver them. They don't have direction but you, you are the light who can shine in the darkness and they see where they are going. Hallelujah. Amen. You are the salt and the light of the world. You have to preserve people's lives. You have to preserve the society. Praise the Lord. Don't lose your saltiness. Don't hide your light. Let your light shine. Let people see your works and glorify the Lord God. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So many of us, we have been underutilizing the treasure in our lives. It is in fact untapped. It is not untapped. Some of you, if we were real and I made people to stand here who have never won a soul this year, many would stand without having money. Just even this very year, you are, and every day people are going to hell. You have the key to unlock for them. Many are still bound. You have the anointing to tell the captives, be set free. Hallelujah. Amen. Others spend sleepless nights. For you, you just sleep and snore. Without any demon touching you. If you hear what people are going through in the night, you just have compassion upon them. But you have a treasure in you. The anointing the Lord gave you. Tie up that anointing. And set the captives free. Bring liberty Bring healing the people who are hurting. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. So why do we need great power and great grace? Why? Jesus promised it. Yes, we are so busy. Just as we have seen John 14, verse 12. But great works you shall do. You can't do great works without great power. That's why the Bible says in Acts 10, 38, how the Lord Jesus was anointed. Meaning that he was empowered. And he went from place to place doing good. Healing the sick. Delivering those ones who are being oppressed by the forces of darkness. It was because he was anointed. The spirit of the Lord was upon him. He was empowered. That's when he would go and help the people. Hallelujah. Amen. You have asked for the anointing for 20 years in salvation. You have asked for an anointing 30 years Forty years, fifty years, and you are not stepping out to use that treasure to advance God's kingdom. Ask your neighbor to tell your neighbor that that anointing which you have requested it for, has for all lost those years, its viscosity. Hallelujah. It is now Every Sunday you come here, they inspire you, they encourage you, you go back and you come back. Lord, I need fees. I need food. 
deserves a reward. What have you done? Are you a detoother? Do you want to detooth Jesus? Hey, yes, you cannot just simply detooth him or defraud him. In his kingdom, he will reward you. He will reward you. He will know that you desire to be rewarded. Hallelujah. Amen. Every day you come, Pastor, but, lay hands on me. Anoint me. Hey, but you come and tell the Name Pastor, anoint me. They look at the anointing bottle and they say, please, then I also anoint them Then I also anointed them So they, go, they come back again saying they want to suck me out of my job. Why not suck me? Because even those people you're working with don't know that you're You lit your candle, but you hid it. And you're requesting for if a promotion. If you're not advancing God's kingdom, why should the promotion come to you? They even doubt this man has good manners. Why is a Moloko or not? I'm a Christian. You have an opportunity to witness where you are. Work in the office, but you can't say anything. Oh, no, 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 you will be promoted when you advance God's kingdom. You know, the Daniels, the Daniels, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in the palace, in a worldly palace. Daniel, Meshach, and Abednego, who is not even born again. Who is not even born again. Who is not even born again. But when they stood as true witnesses and they saw how God was using them, they stood for the truth. They stood in integrity. They persecuted them, those ones who do not believe in their God. They tried to silence them. But they kept pressing on. God used them mightily until the king said the God of Daniel will be worshipped in Babylon. God wants to manifest that glory of our place. He wants to manifest as a mighty God. He has placed a treasure in you that will enable you to stand. Those challenges that are at your workplace He has given you the grace to deal with those challenges. Amen. Amen. He has given you an armor. Hallelujah. Amen. Should you do that, you will not even need to cry for a promotion. They will see that you are a wise May person. May God promote you as you promote the kingdom of God. Amen. So, Mukama, I have to find great grace and great power the Lord. such that we do greater works than what he did. The Lord desires that we should have greater power and great grace that we do to to The second thing is that the scope of the work that we have been assigned is too big. The assignment given to us is very big. You can't do it without great power and great grace and reach to its boundaries or its end. Let us go to Mark 16 verse 15. Have you reached there? Or to say? Beginning from verse 15. Mako kumina mkaga utanike kuninirwa kumina tanu. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
Now, a season na means your village where you reside. The whole world, all to the ends of the world, means the, the place where you reside. It means even where you work. That is another, another, another world. Where you reside. Your neighborhood. Where you were born. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus was not able to reach my home village called Buhore. 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 There in Busia. He did not reach there. But he relied on the disciples that when great power comes upon them, they will go beyond Jerusalem. Are you hearing me? Jesus' his work was around Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Capernaum. Galilee. Syria. Syria. Those places there. He did not reach East Africa. Praise the Lord. Amen. But he knew if these disciples empower other disciples, the mission to the ends of the world will be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Amen. Now that you got the gospel, you are the legs of Jesus Christ. You are the body of Jesus Christ to take the gospel of the kingdom to your family. To your family. To your place of work. To your neighborhood. To your community. You are the body of Christ. You are the feet of Jesus Christ. Jesus would not preach in only one town. He would leave one town and go to another. But some of us we even don't know the boundaries of our LOC one. The local council zone. We even don't know the boundaries. We have never even planned in our mind and said, this year I must be able to finish the LOC one zone where God planted me. You see how you are underutilizing the treasure in you? God bless you with the man and you bought a plot somewhere in a certain estate. You have neighbors you don't know. You have never even knocked at their gates. To just even begin from saying that the, the word of God says, I should love my neighbor as I love myself. Love has brought me neighbor to talk to you. Hallelujah. Amen. I have brought you the love of Jesus, my neighbor. Jesus died for you and me. And he wants to reconcile you to God, your creator. This Jesus wants all men to be saved. To know all the truth. Then he says, Me, I'm a Catholic, and I'm a Catholic. Catina Mirana in our Gambanti, and then Dimo Catholic, Nayan and the local canon of Bacatolic. Then you tell him the book of Timothy says, No, the Comagama, it's not Timothy. There is one mediator. To what you want, my guy is only a man called Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I mean, it's not Mary's. No, Mary is not the mediator. A Roman government in Maria, your Gomosis, I see the saints are not the mediator. And I know about me about two kids. The only one mediator is Jesus Christ. Oh, is the only one who can restore your relationship with your God. Yeah, yeah, I saw a cousin. Then you know in this week I've reached at least one family. Why not even cook tea and say we have a party, a birthday party? Then 
invite them. Instead of, instead of saying, Oh, Omano Yanuma Nanga Musindika, Oh, Mano, no, Omano Yanuma, Mogambi Mukama Yagavana. Kati, on, that, on, the, on your birthday or the birthday of that child, don't spend time saying, Oh, I had hard labor pains for this child. Don't spend time on that. Instead, you say, Oh, it is God who Some of us have opportunities even on the birthdays of our children, and we invite neighbors and we tell them stories which are not adding value. parties. <laughs> Ah, this child was very stubborn. But I, found... I came my children. <laughs> now he's coming down. Hallelujah. Amen. Or an opportunity to sell a cake. You, you have an opportunity when they are cutting a cake to first preach to them about Christ. You can even tell them about the birth of Christ. As you speak about the birth of your child, you, say, you, you tell them that Jesus came with the purpose and he was burst forth like this child was And the angel declared good news. And said, blessed are you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you're going to give birth to a savior. And Mary said, how shall it happen to me? And the angel said that a whole spirit will hover over you. And that child is going to save people's sins. And then. indeed, it came to pass. Remember, you are no longer speaking about your child, but you're speaking about Christ. But they are waiting you to cut a cake because they are waiting for a cake. But you have actually turned it into a crusade in your home. Go and make a crusade in your neighborhood. Take our functions. What also over the Tebasa Baraku Gulla gate. You have a functions. There's even if they can't allow to open their gates for you, but make a function and say, to uh, Make a function and say, We have now to spent five years in marriage. We are celebrating our marriage. Our marriage anniversary. We have spent now five years in marriage. You call them. Celebrating them. So you, can, you say, Come and let's celebrate together. So we have asked for you to give us money so that we go and preach the gospel. So if you can't give us the money, go and use that money to make functions and invite your neighbors and preach to them. And you tell them that it was such a year and this man uh, proposed to me. And as you mentioned that proposal, speak about Jesus' proposal to them. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you see how the gospel is easy to preach? That's why they say that those who win souls are wise. Go in your house and ask God for wisdom. How will I manage these neighbors? How will I get to them to preach to them? These my staff people whom I work with at my workplace, how can I start preaching the gospel to them? When I am company, I must try to and I can go focus on. But while the abantu to babiri, abawa la babiri normally in zoom. Gatu kuata abantu. Oh, muko omtu gamba encha. Go again to kugudi na gundi breakfast. Gatu kutu ala ku breakfast uba ku lunch. When in my company where I used to work, we were three of us, two girls and one man. So we used to say, now tomorrow you are going to buy so uh, percentage. breakfast. On the monthly salary that you would get, we had a certain percentage of evangelizing in that very company we were working. So some staff members would take them for breakfast and others for lunch. And on Friday, we used to work half day. In the evening, we would return at like four to read a report. So we would write our reports very quickly. Hey, thank you. This, I'm going to buy soda and preach the gospel. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, so at, at midday we we'll look go for lunch and we'll look for special places that are rare. Cut lunch is on you. And on me. 
Mm. So we would drive you and we say, we'll tell the people that the lunch is on me, let's go. So we would have a good time with them and preach to them. Some got saved. Hallelujah. Amen. We started up an altar in that company and we would do his prayer and demons would flee. You don't have to wait for the, to bring those people here. And because they saw the grace of God was upon us, we became the pastors in that company. They would come slowly and tell you about their marriage and say, a marriage issues and say, My yeah, marriage has this issue. This is what my spouse no, did. So it would say, Let's go into scriptures. The solution is in the scriptures, not in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Some staff members will take us to their homes to pray for those hardest hey, issues. So where at your workplace, when will the pastor we get there? You are the ambassador of heaven that God has sent you. He has given you wisdom and anointing and gifts. Because it's it. Use them and represent heaven and preach the gospel of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. So, God gives us great power and great grace because the work is huge. To preach the whole world is not a small thing. Then the other thing is that the territory is where we preach from. Because God's kingdom also advances territorially. The Bible says, when the Holy Spirit will come upon you, you will receive power and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the world. Now, Jesus is like giving them a strategy that you will go conquering one town to another, one city to another, one territory to another. Yes, solo yaleba we nkolanti. Muti agenda muri ya chitundu kuchitundu chitundu kuchitundu. When you have conquered Jerusalem, but wangu la Jerusalem, there is Judea. Katino zako idu. Maybe Jerusalem is your neighborhood. Oh, sanga Jerusalem yeye muri wana. And then the village is neighboring. Katino nebi adebi jimuli dan. Hallelujah. Amen. Until you go to the ends of the world. Oh, kuto salo no tuka kumkomi nzasi. Now, in territories where Jesus want people to be delivered. Where he wants his kingdom to reign. There's the enemy holding people in captivity. There's the enemy ruling in those territories. Who doesn't want people to know the truth? So God brings great power upon us to deal with strongholds. To deal with forces of darkness. To deal with forces that are resisting the knowledge of God. To bring them to obedience. Hallelujah. Amen. So great power is not just for you to enjoy. Is to conquer territories for us. Hallelujah. Amen. If you conquer territory to territory, even the resources will increase. Even the promotion will increase. Opportunities for you to prosper will come. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we, we see in the Bible, since advancing God's kingdom is also territorial. One time Paul wanted to go to certain people in the book of Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 17 and 18. Kuminamisambu. First Thessalonians. Who gets the mechia kubiri? 
Okay, let me read in English. But, but, if, but we brethren, having been taken away from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored more eagerly to see your face with great desire. Okay, Paul was one of the very powerful apostles. In the Thessalonians, he desired to go to certain brethren to see them face to face. Now, he was writing a letter without seeing them face to face. Even when he desired to go and meet them, he desired to see them face to face. He says he wanted to go, but Paul, from the first time, Second time, the devil resisted him. That means the devil has some power that resists the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. But greater is he who is in us than the one who is in those communities than the witches in those communities, than the principalities, than the forces of darkness ruling in that community. You see, you hear, greater is he who is in you. That is what the treasure we are telling you. You are carrying a powerful person. A person of Jesus Christ. That's why we say, where he is not, you are his body. Because he is in you. He is greater. He can deal with the forces that are resisting the gospel. So God Amen. gives us greater power to engage in spiritual warfare to deal with principalities with rulers in dark places and any force that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God. We put them down because the one in us is more powerful and the one who is in us he wants to manifest greater works hallelujah amen so we know where to get the power to deal with those forces that resist so God gives us greater power and grace to deal with the forces of Resistance. And the last point which I want to tell you why God gives us greater power and grace. The places, whether it is a place of work, whether it is neighborhood, in the community where you live, or communities, whatever God can send you, people have problems. People have challenges. People are oppressed. People are confused. And they need the power of God to deliver them from their problems. So God gives you greater power because in Mark 16, 15 downwards, he said that these signs will go. With the believers. Why did God accompany the signs and wonders? Why did God accompany the with the believers the gospel, with the, with the gospel of the believers. He knew that where they are going, they will find the sick. And some of the sicknesses, doctors cannot handle. 
Only the great physician called Jesus. Who has entrusted you with his treasure. Who has entrusted you with his anointing. Is able to deal with sicknesses which doctors cannot handle. Hallelujah. Amen. The time is great. Great grace is there to heal everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. And you should be desiring that times come in your life. Operate in that grace. Because Jesus, in some places, the grace was there to heal all. Now he told us greater works shall we do. Hallelujah. Amen. So you can also operate in the anointing to heal every patient, every sick person they bring. He told them you lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. His ministry involves it. Power demonstration. So stir up the grace in your life. To go and demonstrate God is power. This is for all believers. Shake your neighbor. This is for you. It is not for only pastors. Hallelujah. Amen. You can cast demons from your fellow workers. Hallelujah. Amen. And they say, Pastor, and you, they will tell you that hey, you have brought church here at our workplace, and you tell them, How will I allow these demons to oppress these people? Yeah, you tell them, I cannot watch demons oppressing God's people when the grace is in me. Let me help them and deliver them. Oh, my God, it's so much for you. I'm going to go to God and I'm going to go to God. I'm going to go to God. So there are many problems people are going through. You have the answer because you carry Jesus who is the answer to the world. Jesus is the answer to the dying world. Jesus is the answer to the sick world. He is the answer to those who are in poverty in sickness oppressed by demons. He is the answer. He is looking Looking for feet of somebody here to take the gospel of good news. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord with the great news of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. This should be our daily passion. That God give me fresh grace for the new day. Let us read Mark 138 to 42. Mark 138. Mark 138. Mubulide nebio, kubange choche na jirira. Na ingira makungani loka wemu galira ya yona. Na gabulida nga goba diamoni. Olaba, ne makungani loka wemu alimua baliko diamoni. Even in their synagogues, they are people who are, who are possessed by demons. So he, he, he said in verse 38, let us go into the next towns. That, when will you leave that city and that move to the next? That I may preach there also. When you, will you come out of that company and you go to preach in the next company? When you will finish up with that village and you go to the next village? When you will preach and finish your family and you go to another family? Ask that neighbor. Ask the neighbor that how old are you? All those years. And you are seated on the anointing. Take the anointing to the next city. So he preached in Galilee. In the synagogues. And cast out demons. Go to verse 40. 
Omurana Lugambi Wuruti, Om Ganga Naja Chari, Gamweka did a Nam of Kamida, Nam Gamant Boya Galoinso Kunongosa. Catabayo, a change in the Chinqua Sechisa, right near you, Yari, the entire way you were in the Kokati Wachisa, Om Ganga Naja, Nafukamida. I'm so compassionate about this, and no wonder even Jesus was compassionate to this leper. That the leper came down, beseeching him, and knelt down and said, If you will, make me a whole. He knelt down. You can make me clean. Verse 41. Verse 41. And Jesus was moved with pity. We should also be, take pity on others. There are people who are so troubled. You have a solution, but you are stingy. Amen. Amen. There are those even whom you know <laughs> that if this one went to church, they would make him or her well. But the other is who know. Some even are your brethren, your sisters. You're so stingy, like that rich man in the that who refused to give Lazarus food and went to hell. The poor man with the wounds would come at the gate of the rich man. Lazarus, and would eat the crumbs from the table of the rich man. Without the rich man having compassion to the poor. When he died, he ended up in hell. The flames of hell. He cried. And said, send somebody to tell my brothers. Five of them are still on the earth. Maybe if they will see somebody from who is resurrecting from death, they will believe. He is now compassionate to his brothers when he's already in hellfire. The fire which you leave your relatives to go to. Even when you were so cruel, you don't wish them that fire. That's why the rich man could say, I did not care about my brothers, Lazarus, but now I don't wish them to come to where I am. So Jesus was moved some of them are like your parents, your relatives. You, you, you are not sleeping, sleepless nights thinking, how do I take the gospel to my own people? You don't even fast and say, God, give me a strategy, how do I bring salvation in my family? Good one, oh, say, yeah, you again, I'm a good, say, yeah, yeah, to love it. You're just here singing that I'm moving smoothly to heaven. Oh, say, yeah, I'm a good one. 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 How dare you say so you're moving smoothly? This rich man heaven. would not wish even his brothers, even when he was in hell. Why would you let your kindred to go there? Now, the early church showed us that greater works are possible. That's why Jesus said, Surely, verily, assuredly, solemnly, I said to you, whoever believes, he will do these works and greater works will hit you. Do you know what Jesus said? He said, You are the Christ, the Son of the 
the first time he stood preached under the power 3,000 men were baptized. That was great power. May God empower you with that power. That whenever you stand to preach, before even you end up with a sermon, and people will come receiving Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. The same Peter. Oh, the Peter Yomu. In Acts 5.14 he, The numbers increased and crowds following him were big. To the extent that he could not lay hands on every sick. And when they knew that Peter is going to pass by this town he is going to pass by this Road. People would just fetch their sick and let them on the street. And Peter would walk as his shadow would hit the sick, they would get healed. That is greater power. Greater grace. Bringing those miracles. Happen. Hallelujah. Amen. The people who had problems with their relatives. They did not wait when Peter will go to their towns. They would just know where is he today? Then they will lay the sick on the streets. And the shadow will touch them and get healed. And demons will go. When you get power from above, and you are empowered to preach the gospel, work is made easier. Hallelujah! Amen! Work becomes easier. Jesus is looking for vessels yes, to dress them with power. Some of you just stand in the in, in crusades. And you speak, let healing be there. Let healing be there. Amen. And people will just come and give testimonies. Without laying hands on them. Tire up the gift in you. Be passionate to, and compassionate to the soul. Because God wants to heal them. God wants to deliver them. Hallelujah. Amen. Now for Paul, Paul no. time came in Acts 19, verse 11 downwards. He would also not reach the sick. So they just brought the handkerchiefs. And power was transformed. To go and they take it. That is great power. Hallelujah. Amen. There are people whom God has anointed. And when we reach in the, we, they reach in the city, the principalities just run away. Themselves have become principalities. Hallelujah. Even spiritual people just realize there is another greater power which has invented our city. May great men and women to go and conquer cities. Let principalities just realize that is a greater principality that has entered our city. That's why in the Bible, the Bible says they would say the men who turn cities upside down have come. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe Jesus, the day he saw Peter walking just on the street, he just cheered him and said, My man, my man, man is doing greater works than Ayo. what I did. The, the heavens are heaven. waiting to cheer you up. Hallelujah. Hey. God bless you.